In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create an abstract blur in your photos that's also called the Adamski effect. This type of look is usually represented by a motion blur in the background of a scene with the subject that is still in focus and does not have any blur added to it. It's popularized by a photographer named Josh Adamski. I'll be showing you how to create this effect using Photoshop, so let's go ahead and jump to it. I'm going to begin with this image here, and what I'd like to achieve is a vertical blur of the waterfall in the background while keeping the subject and all of this foreground still in focus. This technique is very similar to how you would do a standard background blur on an image in Photoshop. So if you'd like to check that video out, I've linked to it in the description below. The first thing I want to do here is head over to the Layers panel, and I want to duplicate this layer so I have two copies of the same layer. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut, Command or Control J, to duplicate the layer. Next, I need to mask only the areas that I want to kind of remain in focus for this effect. Now, you can do this in several ways. I'm going to start out by going up to Select, Subject, and that finds the man there in my shot. But I also want to include all of these foreground elements as well. So I'm going to zoom in a touch and scroll down. I'm going to go over to my toolbar and select that quick selection tool there. And I see that plus icon is set, so that means anything that I brush over is going to add to my existing selection. I'm going to increase that size a touch using that right bracket key. And then I'm just going to kind of sweep over the areas that I want to uh, be part of this selection. I'm going to zoom in a little bit because I see some areas here that didn't quite get it. I'm going to reduce that brush size and then just kind of sweep over that log to include all of that in my selection. I don't need a perfect or precise selection for this. But if you do find something that you need to remove, you can press and hold that Option or Alt key until that cursor turns into a little minus sign, and then sweep over the area to remove it. Next, over in that Layers panel, I need to create a mask of only the selection. So I have that selection active. I'm going to click the Create New Layer Mask icon at the bottom, and now you can see that I have a black and white layer mask. If I press and hold that Option or Alt key and click the layer mask, I can actually get a preview of it in my preview window. Next, I need to fill this background layer so the subject is completely gone from that area. So I'm going to start out by recreating that selection. I'm going to press and hold the Command or Control key and then click the mask. And if you look at the image, you can see that those marching ants have returned to the photo. Then I'm going to hide this top layer and activate that background layer. I just click on it so it's highlighted. I'm going to go up to Select, Modify, and then go into Expand. For this image size, I'm going to choose 50 pixels, but the size that you choose for the Expand selection is going to vary depending on the pixel size of your image. I'll go ahead and click OK, and now my selection has expanded a little bit beyond the area that I had selected. Now I'm going to fill this with Content Aware. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Shift and Delete, or Shift Backspace on a PC, Make sure that Content Aware is selected here in that Contents dropdown, and then click OK. Once the area is filled, I can deselect, so I'll use that keyboard shortcut, Command or Control D, and the image looks a little bit funny. It kind of looks like the waterfall is just kind of flowing further and further down. You don't have to worry about this being a perfect Content Aware fill. You basically just want to make sure that all of that area that you had selected is no longer visible. Particularly in this case, I want that man that's standing on the rock to be completely gone from the scene. I'm still going to make sure that the background layer is selected, but I do want to make that top layer visible so I can see it while I'm making my next adjustment. Now, optionally, if you would like, you can convert this to a smart object, and you can do that by right-clicking and choosing Convert to Smart Object. That's basically just going to give you a little bit more flexibility and the ability to re-edit your blur after you've applied it. So with that layer selected, I'm going to go up to Filter, Blur Gallery, and I'm going to choose Path Blur. I'm going to click that little reset button at the top there to start over, because I'd like to create a vertical path blur. So I'm going to click and drag down on my image, and you don't really have to drag too far. 
and that starts that blur process. Next, in the options on the right, under Path Blur, I'm going to increase the speed, and I'm just watching my photo as I'm doing this. And you can also increase that taper if you'd like to kind of, kind of feather, it kind of feathers the edges of each of those blur lines. And I'm gonna zoom in next and scroll down because another thing I'd like to do here is add a touch of grain. So down here under the noise panel is where I want to add that blur. I'm simply going to increase the amount slider and just kind of look at the entire image to see if the grain kind of matches between these two areas. And that looks pretty good. So I'll go ahead and click OK. And now I have my finished image here. If I were to press and hold that shift key and then click that layer mask thumbnail, that hides the layer mask to give me a good before and after preview of my photograph. Let's take a look at this effect with a different photograph. And for this image, I'm going to give the blur a little bit more of a unique look. So let's jump to it. So the first thing I need to do here is just what I did in that previous photo. I need to pull that subject out from the background and I also need to fill that background so it looks basically like there's no subject in the scene. So I'll start out by duplicating the background layer and I'll use that keyboard shortcut again, Command or Control J. Then I'm gonna go up to Select Subject and this is all that I would like to have selected here, but I am gonna kinda of zoom in and remove that little gap that's just right here because that's still part of the background. So I'm gonna access that quick selection tool there on the left, hover over this area, and probably decrease my brush size just a touch. Then I'm gonna press and hold the Option or Alt key and click inside of that area. And let's see if it actually finds it. Nope, it found way too much. Um, so I'm just going to add this area back. And that did a pretty good job. Again, this doesn't need to be perfect. So I'm gonna go with this and see how it looks. So over in that layers panel, I'm going to add a layer mask and that will automatically mask that selection for me. Next, I'm going to reselect that subject by pressing and holding the command or control key and then I'll click that mask to create that selection. I'm gonna hide this top layer and activate the background layer by clicking on it. I need to expand the selection. So I'm gonna go up to select, modify and go over to expand. I'll keep this at 50 pixels and click OK. Then I'm going to fill this with content aware by using the keyboard shortcut Shift and Delete or Shift Backspace. Make sure that content aware is selected there in the contents dropdown and click OK. Then I'll use that keyboard shortcut Command or Control D to deselect. Now I'm ready to create the blur effect on this background layer. I'm gonna start out by making sure that background layer is still active. I'm gonna right click and convert this to a smart object. And then I'm going to make that top layer visible. With that background layer still selected, I'm gonna go up to Filter, Blur Gallery, and then choose Path Blur once again. Over in the right, you want to make sure that you have Edit Blur Shapes checked. You'll see those little pink arrows here if you have it selected properly. If you click on one of those little handles, it allows you to kind of move it around. So I'm actually gonna start out with this blur over on the top left, and this blur is going to be over on the bottom right, and I'm going to give it a little bit of a swirl. So I'm just clicking on that point there, kind of in the middle on the left, and then I'm gonna create another point by clicking, and then I'll drag it down. So I'm kind of creating a little bit of a swooping blur here and it's gonna be a lot more apparent once I start actually increasing the speed. So over in the blur tools on the right, I'm gonna take that speed and move that slider to the right. And I think that's a pretty good amount. I'm also gonna play with the taper just to see uh, what kind of effects that creates. I think I'll add a taper, but not too intense of a taper. So now you can see that the blur is actually kind of moving from the top left to the bottom right. And it fits really well with this type of wavy kind of background. Again, let's add a touch of grain to the photo. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit and pan over. I'll take the amount slider in that noise panel and drag it to the right. And I just, I'm just kind of trying to match what I see here on the original image. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'm finished with that. I'll go ahead and click okay. 
Now that I'm back in Photoshop, I notice that there's a little area down here uh, that needs to kind of be masked again. So let me zoom in and show you. Looks like I missed that spot there, and it just looks kind of funny because the background uh, should be a little bit more blurry. And there's also some edges here that need to be adjusted, so I may see if I can address those as well. So I'm going to go to that top layer and click that mask. I still have that quick selection tool active, um, so I'm going to just decrease that size just a touch, and I'm just going to kind of try to see if I can kind of get that gap area selected well. And I'm going to go ahead and just fill this with black. And I have black as my background color. So I can fill that easily by using the keyboard shortcut Command or Control Delete. And then I'll deselect with that keyboard shortcut Command or Control D. Then I'm going to activate my brush tool and decrease the brush size and zoom in. I want to make sure I'm brushing with black here, which will remove that part of the mask. So I'm just going to make sure that I have black set there in that little swatch area over on the left. And then I'm just going to brush. Oops, I'm going to undo that because I over uh, brushed over the leg a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of do some really subtle brushing here to the edge to clean it up. And I'm, while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of clean some of these edges as well. Now I'd probably go through and do a little bit more edge refinement with that brush tool. Uh, but for the sake of time and everything, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it as is because I think it looks pretty good. Now one thing I noticed here is that it looks a little bit funny there on the bottom part because it looks like the person is kind of floating there in a weird way. So I'm going to do a little bit more masking to kind of bring some of that area back. And, and it'll still be a little bit blurry, but I think it's going to look pretty good. So what I'm going to do is make sure I have that brush tool active. I want to be brushing with white and over in that toolbar. Black is my foreground color, so I'll simply press X to brush with white. I'm going to increase my brush size with that right bracket key. And in the opacity at the top, I'm going to reduce it down to around 20%. Then I'm going to brush over this kind of the sand area. And I think that's pretty good, but I am going to try a few more brush strokes over here, just right here to try to get that reflection in a little bit and maybe do a little bit more just to kind of fade it. So if I press and hold the Option or Alt key and click that mask, you can see where I actually did that extra brushing. So those brush strokes basically just created kind of a gray mask, which allows some of that image to kind of peek through. So let's go ahead and take a peek at the before and after of this photo. I'm going to press and hold that shift key and then click the layer mask to see that change. I hope that this technique gives you a new fun way to play around with your photos inside of Photoshop. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please click that like button and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos just like this. Thanks and I'll see you next time.